Hello everyone, this is Christian. Welcome to another video with me on Node.js Sessions. In the previous video, we learned how to create sessions and store user data into a uh, database called um, in the uh, PostgreSQL database system. This time we're gonna do something very similar, except we're gonna store data into a Mongo database, okay? So um, also we're gonna hash the password as well. This is the previous example here. Um, it's working beautifully. So when we register, we're gonna add the username, email, password to a Mongo database. Now in my Mongo database system over here, I'm gonna use the same database I created in the previous one, a video called users. I have a few examples here, but I'm gonna turn all these, delete all these here. So we're gonna have a clean slate, okay? And so no data. Okay, so what I have is basically gonna be three fields. Um, the ID will have, we manage by, um, you know, Mongo. I'm gonna have the username, email, and password only and be injected directly to this program. All right, so let's go to our uh, program and see how we can do this. Now, I made a copy of the um, Postgres uh, application and, and change that to a session Mongo, okay? So it's the same same application, but the changes will be just the database part of it. So um, over here, as you can see, I imported, um, everything's still the same as before, okay? We're gonna modify this uh, in a little bit when we first create our database in the user um, uh, JS file. So let's go over here and change some stuff over here. So this time we're gonna new, we're not gonna use um, uh, Postgres, so it's gonna be from Mongo database. So I'm gonna re delete everything here and we'll call it Mongoose. I use Mongoose, by the way, I need to import that, but in a minute we'll do it. Require the uh, Mongoose. Actually, you know, before we start, let's go ahead and let me install that first, okay? So let's go to the terminal and this is still running. That's, um, let's turn all these off for now, okay? Okay, I wanna make sure it runs from the right place. So let's go here and first let's install the um, MongoDB and Mongoose. Okay, we need those. And I think the rest should already be installed. Okay, you need that, you need to be crypt and then session and so forth, okay? So all those will be installed here. Make sure you have these packages installed. Basically, these are right here. The PG, I, I'll leave it here, I don't need it, but um, that's okay. All right, so that is done. And then now we go ahead and um, uh, go to the, we actually run the program now. Okay, actually run this thing for 8080, and now we can close this. Okay, so let's set up our mongoose. So again, if you remember, right, mongoose dot uh, connect, connect to the uh, MongoDB. I'm using the lazy method here. You you, you can use variable if you want, but um, this is fine. Uh, one, make sure you use the IP address as opposed to localhost. So it doesn't have any conflict with uh, mongoose. And the database is called MyDB, okay? So if you um, haven't watched what the other video, how I can actually set this up. And then I'm gonna do a, just make sure, you know, it's working. So log that information saying, we know it's working. Otherwise we're gonna go and catch error. Standard, pretty standard stuff handle error, but I'm gonna just console log that to the um, message. And there should be a nothing here. Okay, that's the connection. Only one connection string. And then we're gonna go ahead and then um, uh, we need to also create a schema. So constant color user schema is equal to new, um, no, it's the, uh, yeah, new, new that schema, we're passing here the username, will that be of type um, string, the, to be unique, true, and then we have the required, also true. Okay, on that field, it next is the email, kind of, isn't it kind of similar, except, um, yeah, say I'm gonna copy this, put it here, save us some typing, the password, is uh, let me say uh, not unique, but it's required. Okay, so basically those three fields will be um, created for us. 
And then here we're gonna go ahead and then do the um, uh, model, right? So we'll put here a const uh, model, it's gonna be boost that model and we'll pass in the user and then the user schema. And we'll export this out. Okay, that is pretty much it for this one here. Um, type. No, I meant model. Okay. All right. So this is the setup for a mongoose. Uh, again, you can verify, make sure it's connected or not. When we launch, you see the bottom, you see the message connected because the app was running correctly, running. So again, if you go to the browser and refresh the page, just refresh it. All right. After you load, the message should be um, show connected on here if you, re if you reset it. So what good here for this part? Now let's go over to the index page and we import that user here the same as before, same location, that's fine. The only thing that is different is gonna be when we do the login. Okay, so these are same, nothing different here. Okay, when we log in via the post, right? We go to the form, the user data comes in and we're not gonna make query this way anymore, right? So basically I'm gonna delete everything here so it's not too confusing and we'll just do everything from fresh. The login needs to be uh, performed a little bit differently. Well, the first thing we need to do is, um, we got the data already, user and password, that's fine, is we're gonna try this part, okay? We're gonna call everything here asynchronously. That means this callback has to be async, okay? Async. And then we're gonna catch the error down here if there's any problem, okay? And then. And you can handle it in a nicer way if you want to, I usually, but um, that's fine. So in the try block here, we're going to um, check the user if the user exists in the database. So we're going to create a constant called user and await go to user dot find function, right? And then we want to make sure we call the collation and make sure we set the um, the um, locale to English because our text is in English. That means you and then set the strength to a one or two, it doesn't matter. This is just basically for um, case insensitivity when you search. Otherwise, you have to search exactly in case sensitive. So basically, that's for that. And then the find, we need to. Um, find, actually I want to do a find one. And we pass in here the, the filter, right? What are we looking for? We're looking for the username. Does the username exist here or not? So you put here username. Again, if the field is exactly the same, the keyword is username, the field and user are exactly the same, then you can omit that, just put username like that, okay? So that's basically, this username here is not this one, okay? This username here, is the one you use in the database or in your schema. So in our schema, right, we call it username. If you call it differently, whatever this one is, has to match that, right? So username, username is the same, so just call it that. If that is true, if that is successful, then the user should contain something, right? If it's not successful, they, the user is gonna be empty. So we check to see if the user is indeed not empty. So we can say, if the user is not empty, has something, then go ahead and process that else, you know, we direct the user back to the login again. You know, keep logging until you get it right, right? Basically, that's it. So if the user is indeed successful, then we proceed. Then we need to validate the password. So again, like the previous example, we already uh, encrypt the password. If you don't encrypt it, then it's not gonna work. So let's just say, uh, again, if I don't encrypt it, right? So I'm gonna put it in the uh, user, uh, user dot password, this is from the database, is equal to the password. If it's not encrypted, then go ahead and do the following. I'm gonna change the session of the user to the user coming from the database. I'm gonna change the app to locals of the uh, username to show on this browser is going to be the user that username, and then we'll add that 
locals the login attribute will be equal to true. Okay, and then we're gonna redirect a user. I think that here, yeah, right? Redirect a user to the index page or the home page. Okay, that is the true part, right? So that's how you set up for MongoDB. Okay, the logic here is still the same, but just that we're using a different way to access the data. That is for the login. So let's save and try this first, okay? So let's say that, and it should not work because it's not thing in the database. So let's go over here and do a login. I'll put some, you know, some gibberish. You can see nothing is logged and we can't log in until we have some data. So let's go to Mongo database and create um, one example of data here. Let's refresh the page first, no data. We're gonna create one, very simple one. And the ID, I can leave it blank. I need the um, uh, username for me, the uh, email, me that at m.com, and then we have the uh, password uh, 1234. Okay, so add that in here. So we have one username, me 1234. So let's try that. So here go me, and then 1234. And boom, so we logged in. You can see that the username me is now here and it's working as expected. Okay, so now uh, when we register, right? So we do the same thing, we register. Let's go ahead and fix our code first. Down here, when we do the post and register, we check the user uh, passwords, make sure they match. Once they are matched, then we build the user just like we did before. Okay, we just pick the data here. And then again, the hashing is the, the way it is, it's fine. I'm gonna hash it, okay? Um, since already here, we're gonna hash the password using decrypt hash sync. And then we pass the password and we set the salt to a 10. Uh, and then now this part is not gonna be like this anymore, right? When you post, when you add data, um, we're gonna do it differently. Um, it's actually much simpler than this. So basically, um, what I do here, we don't need this whole part actually. I'll just make it a little bit easier for us. Let me re clean this part here. So once we set our object like this, because we're using schema, right? Mongoose is a schema based uh, program. So that means that once I create this object, it matches my schema, right? See the user here using email password matches schema. So all I'm doing is basically save this data. So I'm gonna do something like um, user.save. And um, that is pretty much it. But before we do that though, how does Mongoose know that we actually pass some data to this? And that is by creating a new schema here called new user. You pass into this new user, it's a constructor. You pass this object to it like that. So as you can see, quite easy, right? We create a new user using the user we imported way up here, right here, okay? Which is this uh, model right here. So we instantiate a new user. Um, we pass in the data, the object we need. We encrypt the password right away. And then we just call the save function. And that's it. Very simple like that using Mongoose. And then the rest will be the same. We set up the username, the uh, user session, login true, and we direct back to the index page or the slash is the same. I'll call it index, so it's not confusing. And that's it. So now we're using hash, but when I log in, I did not use the hash right here. So once I register a new user, this will not work. Okay, just to prove that it doesn't work, let's give it a test. So go over here, I'm gonna click again. Log in with me, right? We have one, two, three, four. I'm able to log in because the password is not hashed. Now let's register um, you and you add you.com and then one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Okay, I'm registered. As you can see, you is logged in. Alrighty, I want to log out and log in you. One, two, three, four. As you can see, it won't let me log in, okay? Because the password is now hashed and I'm trying to log in using hash and then it's not correct. Just to verify in our password uh, hash, refresh this, you see the second uh, uh, user has a hash password. To get this back, I have to unhash it. Right. So that is the, uh, the way 
to do that. So we basically, when you do this part here again, we're going to unhash this. So you put that into the bcrypt that compare sync using a, the synchronous approach. The first is the uh, plain string, which is the um, just the password. The second is going to pair that, compare that against the one and the user that username, I mean password, which is the hash keyword. Okay, so now this will work for the second user. The first user, it doesn't work anymore. Okay, so save that. Go to the web page and again go to login me at me one two three four will not work. Okay, but you at one two three four should work. There we go. Okay, so that is how you use Mongo database to store data when you do this kind of session. So again, the code looks very similar to Postgres. The only difference is again, how you insert data, how you make query based on the system. But the whole logic here uh, is exactly the same. All right, so if you have any questions, please let me know. Thank you.